turn to Mark chapter 5, you can get there, um, and you'll be ready for when I do get to that point in Scripture. Uh, Mark chapter 5, I'm not a PowerPoint um, whiz like a lot of people are, so... I do want to thank Pastor Mark for giving me this opportunity um, to share God's Word today with you. Um, for quite some time I've had this message just coming back up in my mind and my spirit. And it's a message that God had given me uh, many years ago that I had shared um, in South Carolina and Indonesia. But it just for some reason just kept coming back up. And then when Pastor Mark asked me to speak, I thought, well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, so I believe there's something that God wants to say to us, to me and to us as a church. Amen. You know, God's been very faithful to us over this past year. I mean, you know, 121 years for our church. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're not, we're definitely, we can look around, we're not the biggest church around. We're not, the, I mean, size-wise, the building is, but not people-wise. But God continues to sustain us. He continues to keep us. And the things that these ministries do are astounding. And, you know, it's, a, it's just amazing. But, you know, there are some things that have been taking place recently. We had a prayer meeting um, this past month, I believe it was. And as we came in for the prayer meeting, we all sat down. And, and Pastor Mark, just before we got started, he says, I just sense that there's a weariness here. And we need to pray for each other. Yeah. And we did. We went around one by one, and everybody said a prayer request and we prayed for each other one by one. I think, you know, someone said to me a couple weeks ago, they said, I'm really having trouble focusing right now. And I said, you know, I am too. So I think there's something that's operating right now that's trying to get us distracted, trying to get us to lose heart, Amen. trying to get us, you know, to feel like, you know what, I just want to quit mm -hmm. and feel weary. And, you know, we go through times like that. We're not always on the mountain. Amen. We're not always that happy, happy, joyful, joyful. Amen. There are times and seasons we go through where we are tired. Yes, yes. There are seasons we go through where we feel weary, where we just are tired, and we need some rest, and we need some strength from God, and we need each other all the time, yes, and we need God all the time, yes. to encourage each other, pray for each other. And so, you know, this is something that's going on, but I want to encourage us, as I was thinking about that, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, it's easy sometimes to think we're, we're fighting a physical thing. We're fighting what's happening right here. But our struggle's against the enemy. It's against the unseen forces that are trying to stop us. Amen. You know, that's what started from the very beginning was the evil that came into this world. And it's that thing that's, that's operating to try to get us to want to quit God's plans and purposes for our life. And God's got a purpose for you. Amen. You know what you are, right? What are you? Amen. You are God's what? Children. Children. Workmanship. Or you know my favorite word. Masterpiece. Amen. You are his masterpiece. Amen. That's the New Living Translation, sorry. But workmanship is correct. King James and, and um, NIV version. Workmanship, craftsmanship, NLV. Masterpiece. God's most awesome creation. That's what you are. And he's got a plan for you that he planned a long time ago, according to Ephesians 2 and 10. So I want to share with you this morning on this topic, nothing is impossible for God. Amen. Nothing. As we get ready to start this new year, be reminded of that. Nothing is impossible for God. Christmas Eve, I uh, got a little package in the mail. My niece had sent me a message. She said, Aunt Becky, I saw something that reminded me of you, and I'm just sending it to you just because. Mm -hmm. And in the mail, I got this package, and there was a pair of handcrafted earrings and on it said, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And I thought, God, thank you for your confirmation. Yes. Because it's the same concept. All things are possible Amen. with God. Nothing is impossible for God. That's right. These are the words that God spoke to the angel Gabriel when he talked to the Virgin Mary. He told her that she would give birth to a son and call him Jesus. She said, how can this be since I'm a virgin? 
And Gabriel's response was, for nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. God's able to take someone who's never been with anybody else, impregnate them to have a baby Amen. who will be the son of God Amen. and save the world from their sins. Amen. If he can do that, nothing in our lives is too hard for God. Amen. Nothing. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what's going on in your life, but be reminded there's nothing impossible for him. In the Gospel of Mark, we have the story of a rich man coming to Jesus, asking what he must do to have eternal life. Jesus quoted him some of the commandments, and the man responded that he kept them since he was a boy. But Jesus told him, there's one thing that you're lacking. You need to go sell all of your riches. Go sell all of the, the things that you have. Give them to the poor. Come and follow me. And the man's face fell. And he walked away sad. He couldn't do it. Because his riches were more important to him than giving them all up to follow Jesus. Jesus turned to his disciples in Mark 10 and 26 and 27. He says, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples said they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Amen. It's impossible to save ourselves. There's nothing I can do to be able to be good enough for God to say, enter into the kingdom of God. Nothing. By myself, I can't save myself. It's impossible. That's why Jesus Christ came. But what I can do is surrender myself, ask him to come into my life, because he gave his life for me, accept the gift of salvation, and then it's possible. With him, all things are possible. Amen. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you this morning, God, that you are here, that you have a word for us today. God, that you want to destroy some issues that we have in our lives. God, I thank you that you want to give some strength back where we're weary. God, that you want to bring some joy back where there's sadness. God, that you want to bring some healing where there's sickness. God, that you want to do something impossible, God, for someone who thought that it couldn't be done. God, I thank you, Father, that you were going to take, Lord, what I can't do and make it possible this morning. God, I give you the glory for it. Let your anointing rest on this word and give us ears to hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to look at the woman with the issue this morning. Amen. I love this story in the Bible, Mark chapter 5. I didn't forget it because that's where we're going. Mark chapter 5. A woman who had an issue. How many have issues? Amen. Uh, Amen. One third of you? <laughs> <laughs> issue! That's not touchdown because you know I love football. Issue! <laughs> that is the Buffalo Bills, yes. <laughs> Sorry, girls. Don't look at this at YouTube. Okay. All right. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 34. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jarius came. And get my paper here. And when he saw Jesus, thank you, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciple answered, and yet you asked, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. 
Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Isn't that an amazing story? Now in verses 21 to 24, we have the story that Jesus has just received the news this little girl's been sick. And someone wants, the father wants him to come heal her. So he's going to heal her. But I want you to understand, as he's on the way, there's an interruption. Here he is going to heal this little girl, but there's an interruption. And, I, and we're not, you know, this isn't really part of the focus of the message, but I want you to get it right here. God is not too busy that he you can't interrupt him. Yeah. Always remember that. <clears throat> He's never too busy for you. you <laughs> He's always able to, 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 to be right there when you need him. There's always able time for an interruption. It's encouraging to know that. He's always aware of our needs. Now I want us to look at three principles from this story. The first thing is we need to make the move. Make the move. The first step to experiencing God's miraculous power is for you to move. You have to take the step and get out of the comfortable place that you're in right now. Now, I'm not saying that her place was comfortable. She's been sick. She's had an issue for over 12 years. But in that time, it's easy to probably get, she's very tired, I'm sure. Her body's weak. It's easy to start feeling, I'm sure, oppressed, depressed. A lot of things can be going on inside of this woman. Twelve years. I, I mean, honestly, my brain can't wrap around that. According to the Mosaic Law, this woman is considered unclean. If she does go out in public... She's got to be walking around going, I'm clean, I'm clean. How embarrassing is that? I mean, just the shame and the disgrace of not being able to even be around people. I mean, the things were so different back then. It really is. I mean, sometimes us ladies were kind of like, hey, being a lady. But I mean, it's not as bad as what it used to be, ladies. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, let's just be real about some stuff. There are some things that, I mean, this woman, bless her heart, if she is married, she couldn't even be with her husband 12 years being alone. You're not to be around anybody because of an issue. Some of us raised our hands. Amen. I have an issue. Amen. <laughs> you can't come near me. I have an issue. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what the issue is. It could be spiritual. Amen. It might be physical. Amen. It could be financial. Amen. It might be emotional. Thank you, relational. I got issue. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't come near me. I am unclean. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. <laughs> but the thing is. With my issue, I gotta get out from where I am to where he is. Thanks. That's right. I gotta say, I don't want to stay with my issue yes. anymore. Twelve years is long enough. Thanks. Maybe it's only been three months. It's long enough. Yes. Maybe it's only been a week. It's long enough. Yes. God don't want us living with Thanks. issues. Thanks. God came that we would be set free. All of us to live with freedom. Thank you, Lord. Again, it doesn't mean that we won't go through things. It doesn't mean that there won't be times we're going to have tests and trials because the Bible says we will. Yes. We're going to be tested. Yes. Think about Paul. Paul had what was considered a thorn in the flesh. He prayed three times. God didn't take it away. There will be some things God will let in our lives because God wants to change us. But I'm talking about issues. Issues that we need to get out of our lives. When God said, I'm putting a test in your life, that's different than an issue. This is why we need to pray. This is why we need to know the Word of God. Because 
what is it we're going through? Is it something we need to get out? We need deliverance from? We need to change? Or is it something that God is saying, you know what? This is here because my grace is sufficient for you. This is here because it's a test that I want you to pass. This is here because I want to make you stronger. You know, people go exercise because those muscles, don't look at this, because those muscles need to, need to be worked. Marie, you come up, you work out. I don't work out. I don't want to work out. But that's, there's a purpose for the, for, the, for the machines. There's a purpose for the weights. There's a purpose for the things, the obstacles that come in our way. Because as you press against them, I press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Jesus Christ. Because as I press, there are things in my body, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, that are growing stronger. Amen. But I got if I don't get to him, I won't change. Make the move. Because if you stay where you are, you're still going to have the issue. If you stay where you are, you're still going to. Okay. January 1st is coming. Now, we do love Jesus. Yes, we do. Now, the word of God says in these verses, she heard. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing, hearing by the word. word of God. You know your Bible. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm from the South. That's how we do it.
James 4 and 8 says, if you'll draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. I don't care what the issue is. Jesus is able to take care of it. Whether it's emotional, financial, relational, yes. spiritual, I said all that stuff. It doesn't matter. She was not afraid to believe for the miracle. She was not afraid to do something extreme. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say whether or not she ran through. Well, it, we don't know. I mean, it doesn't say if she has run through there unclean, unclean or not. She was supposed to be doing that. It doesn't say. I want to think she probably wasn't because when she touched the hem, there wasn't all that loud noise of her mouth running. <laughs> she was saying in herself. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. So verse 27 tells us there's a lot of people around Jesus. This could have made her feel discouraged. Maybe my miracle won't happen. Too many obstacles. She's probably weak. Twelve years, she's weak. Her body, her strength, probably just, ugh. I don't know, she might have been bent over. She may have been crawling, but she's like, I'm going to get to Jesus. Yes, Lord. There's got to be a determination that nothing's going yes. to stop Thank you from receiving Jesus. your miracle. Yes. Your feelings can't stop yes, you. Other Lord. people can't stop you. Yes. you got to know G that Satan can't stop you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. The reality is many people were touching Jesus, but this woman really touched him. Thank you, Lord. The word touch in this scripture means to affect something because of contact. When you look that verse up, it means to affect because of contact. She had a need. He had the answer. She was the first person to ever touch the hem of his garment and be healed. Thank you. She broke through to a new dimension because she believed there were no other options. Yes. Amen. That's right. She had already spent all she had on those doctors. There was nothing left. Nothing. Make your move. Already focused on this a little bit. You need number two, you need to speak the word. Speak the word. Faith comes by hearing, hear by the word of God. As you get the word of God going out of your mouth over and over again, as you hear yourself saying that over and over again, that faith keeps building. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Faith will always maintain a constant confession. She heard about Jesus healing people and she confessed it to herself. Again, there will be times you're going to be alone. You need to know what the Word of God says and encourage yourself in the Lord. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 2 says this, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Amen. Set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits at God's right hand in the place of honor and power. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Do not think only about things down here on earth. There comes a time when we have to make a decision to take our thoughts away from ourselves and our situations and put them on Jesus. Amen. You know, I love that phrase that says you can't all, you can't be so heavenly minded, so spiritually minded, that you're no earthly good. You know, there's a balance. There's a balance. But there is a time when you need to say, I need to get my mind filled with what God says so that I can apply what God says into what is here. Amen. You need to fill your mind with the Word of God, with what He's saying in here, in your spirit, and apply those things into your situations. Set your sights on the realities of heaven. What are the realities of heaven? Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God, interceding for us. He's victorious. He's the one who paid the price for our sins. He's the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave. He's the one who is our healer. He's the one who's able to do the impossible. Yes. With Him, nothing's impossible. That's right. There comes a time we've just got to focus on those things which are above. 
And then it says that what is in here is going to come out of here. What is in our hearts are going to come out of our mouths. When the woman touched Jesus, <coughs> the blood immediately stopped flowing and she was healed. When we have an encounter with Christ, we will never be the same again. Amen. <coughs> he promised whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I love <coughs> point number three. It's right there. <coughs> Thank you. The third point. Thank you, sorry. <coughs> Come clean and be clean. Come clean and be clean. In verses 30 through 34, Jesus knows somebody's already touched him. He knows it. Because the power went through him. And the disciples are like, you know, Jesus is like, who touched me? So I was like, are you crazy? Look at all these people. What do you mean who touched you? He said, no, somebody touched me. <clears throat> there was a touch that affected somebody, <clears throat> that created a change. <clears throat> Verse 33 tells us, the woman came, fell down at his feet, told him the whole truth. Think about that. She told him the whole truth. We cannot keep things in our lives, hidden things, things we think are hidden, things that we think are okay, <coughs> and think that will continue to be okay. <coughs> Thank you, Ed. <coughs> we can't keep these things in our lives. Jesus wants us to be honest. He, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's a spirit of truth. She came, fell on his feet, told him the whole truth. We don't know how that issue started. We have no idea. The Bible does not tell us. It may have just been something that just happened. It could have happened because of something she did wrong. It could have been, you know, there are sins that there are consequences to some sins. We can ask God to forgive us, but there are still some consequences. You go rob a bank, you're probably going to jail. Probably. And you're still forgiven when you repent. There's some that have certain consequences. We don't know where her issue came from. The Bible does not tell us this. But whatever happened in her life, whatever went on, all we know is... And whether she just fell down and says, it was me. Whatever it was, she told him the whole truth. And all I want to say to you this morning is, just be honest with God. Whatever the issues might be, it may be an issue with anger. It may be an issue with unforgiveness. It may be an issue with um, pornography. It may be an issue with relational um, things. It may be an issue with... Um, you may have physical issues. You may have um, what issues? Other issues? Talk about spiritual issues that you're struggling spiritually. Whatever those issues are, all God is just come and just be honest. Yeah. Tell Him the whole truth because yeah. He's here. Yeah. He's here to help us be free. Mm -hmm. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He doesn't want us living with issues. He doesn't want us being in any type of bondage. He wants us free. Yes. He loves you. Yes. He's got a plan for you. <laughs> I would love to know what that man's like, life was like after that. Can you imagine 12 years being in the house? <laughs> <laughs> being set free is all <laughs>
issues. He doesn't want us. They can get so easy sometimes. And I think that's, that's probably the thing this morning is it gets so easy sometimes because after we've had these things in our life, you become, it becomes normal. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's like, it's okay. This is part of my life. <coughs> but what is the reality? God wants us living with his joy. Yes. God wants us living with his peace. God yes. wants us living with full of his spirit. Yes. God wants us living, you know, all those attributes and those fruits of the spirit and all those things and being changed from glory to glory and faith to faith and strength to strength and all those things. It's all a process. And Otis preached about it recently, about the sanctification and all those things. And Pastor Mark every week is preaching the Word of God and how we can apply the Word of God in our lives so that we're not staying the same. And, you know, we're not to be the same day after day and week after week and month after month and year after year. Are you ready for 2016 to be something that's not full of issues? With God, nothing is impossible. Nothing. Nothing. Will you stand with me this morning? Yes.